Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. About 100 protesters have set up camp outside Children's Village, protesting, wanting their voices heard, wanting 15-year-old Grace to be released. I've got the night cam on the scene. Protesters back in Shelby Township tonight. This time, there were arrests when anyone tried blocking a main road. But we begin with Governor Gretchen Whitmer issuing a new executive order tonight that will allow Detroit's three casinos to reopen next week. Thanks for being with us for the news at 11. The executive order also imposes new restrictions up north. Yeah, the governor cites a spike in cases due to social gatherings. Tonight, she has now banned all indoor bar services statewide in businesses that earn 70% or more of their money on alcohol sales. She's also limiting indoor gatherings to 10 or fewer people. Now, these new restrictions impact regions 6 and 8 up north. They have been in phase 5. Uh, all the other regions, including Southeast Michigan, have been in phase four, and we've already had those restrictions in place. Hope that sorts it out a bit. Mara McDonald live at MGM Grand tonight. And Mara, the executive order means casinos also can begin reopening next Wednesday, though, with a big caveat. There is a real big one, Devin, and it's called 15% density or occupancy. You heard me right. That's one Five. Now, that said, all of Detroit's casinos have had COVID-19 protocols in place for weeks. They've been lobbying to reopen. Vegas has been open since June 4th. But realize that if you decide to go in here or any of the other casinos, the experience, like everything else in our lives right now, it's going to be different. It's not just the density that will be limited. MGM, for its part, has already had a multitude of COVID protocols in place for months. It starts with a temperature check when you hit the door and socially distanced gaming. For example, not all the slot machines will be up and running in order to keep people apart. Motor City Casino tells us their protocols are similar and they will not have seating for table games and it's unlikely any of the casinos will allow smoking on the gaming floor. The revenue generated by Detroit's casinos is critical to the city. The casino shutdown is likely to blow a $100 million hole in the city's budget this year alone, which is why the mayor and council acted so swiftly, laying off employees as well as instituting pay cuts in every city department except public safety. Back here live, and if you do feel like, you know, going to test your luck, you absolutely have to walk in there with a mask on Otherwise, they're not going to let you in the door. And something else to consider, don't expect all the restaurants, the buffets, and all of that to be up and running. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of baby steps here. We're live downtown tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. Indeed. Okay, Mara, thanks. Well, the governor's new executive order comes as the state reported 996 new cases of COVID-19 in the past 24 hours. Uh, as we've had, uh, we've pointed out several times today, we do need to let you say that eight or 300 rather of those cases are from older lab results just now confirmed. But the state's also reporting another two deaths to the virus. Other headlines today: the Wayne County Health Department says five cases of the virus have been linked to a wedding reception held July 18th at Crystal Gardens Banquet Hall. That's in Southgate. Health Department now wants to speak with everyone who attended that wedding. And the MHSAA says fall high school sports will begin with a phased in approach. And we put the entire list of guidelines on our website at clickondetroit.com. Another tense night in Shelby Township as protesters stood outside township offices and marched. But tonight, police arrested at least two protesters. Jason Colthorpe is live in Shelby Township, where there were also a lot, of, a lot more supporters tonight of police, Jason. There sure were. In recent weeks, Kimberly, we have been out here and seen a handful of counter protesters, uh, people who are pro police and or pro Trump. And tonight they came out in droves and equaled the number of protesters out here right behind me. And when they came face to face, things got heated. Shelby Township Police made it clear to protesters Wednesday they would not tolerate anyone in the street stopping traffic. That if you enter the roadway, it's a misdemeanor crime and you can be arrested. Protests again centered around Chief Bob Shalide's conduct. In addition to inflammatory social media posts, Local 4 confirmed he sent this email in June to the entire department asking them to read an article titled The Myth of Systemic Police Racism. Black Lives Matter! We're going to keep coming until he's fired or resign. And uh, until 
uh, they get rid of these racist people off the trustee board. Hey, hey. As protesters started to march, two were almost immediately arrested for walking in the street. Protesters marched for a few miles without incident, but then returned to township offices. There ain't no damn such thing. I work hard for everything I got. To find 45 or so counter protesters holding their own rally. Our police are getting a bad rap. Um, they can see live footage of incidents that happen with our police and shootings. And when our police are have justified shootings, they still believe our police are wrong. All lives matter. Many shouting matches, but police were able to largely keep the peace. Uh, I should point out the man you saw being led away right there at the end. Uh, a young lady accused him of assault. Uh, police detained him, questioned him, took a report, and then released him. We're in Shelby Township, Jason Coulthard, Local 4. And, and Jason, so we still haven't heard from the chief himself on any of this? We have not. Uh, he did not respond to our request for either an interview or a comment for this story. However, uh, it should be pointed out that Reverend Rideout, who was kind of the leader of this protest, whom you saw in that story and was arrested last week, told me that Chief Shalad reached out to him tonight for a meeting mm -hmm. that is expected to happen in the next couple of days. We'll see what happens with all of that. Back to you. Well, you've been all on top of it, and I know you will keep us posted. Jason, we appreciate it. Let's move to a different protest, an overnight protest that is underway outside Children's Village in Pontiac, where dozens are demanding the release of 15-year-old Grace, as we've come to know her. She's the girl who's made national headlines after being placed in juvenile custody for violating probation, terms of which included having to finish her schoolwork it's a bit more complicated than some have wanted to make this about homework. Tim Pamplin is in Pontiac with the night cam. About 100 protesters have set up an encampment outside Children's Village in Waterford, the Oakland County facility where the 15-year-old girl, known as Grace, remains housed. Grace won't be able to go home tonight, so neither should we. As the sun set over Children's Village tonight, protesters started arriving and readied for an all-nighter. Um, we're going to have tents, we're going to have sleeping bags, we're going to have people sleeping on the grass. The young girl ended up in trouble with the law after she got physical with her mother. Mum calls the police. The young girl is then placed on probation. It was as a violation of probation that she ended up here. This protest stems from a hearing nine days ago when the judge made this order. I respectfully deny the motion for release. How many kids don't do their homework? The state rep says, yeah, she's fired up passionate enough at my age to come out here and spend the night in a tent. Now we have some late breaking developments here in this case. I just got off the phone with the prosecutor's office. They're telling me that the defense in this case, Grace's attorneys have filed an appeal with the Michigan Court of Appeals and the prosecutor's office is joining them in that appeal. The prosecutor and the defense attorneys don't feel that Children's Village is the place for Grace. We'll keep you updated. That's the scene tonight outside Children's Village with the night camp. Tim Pamplin, Local 4. Yeah. All right, Tim, a downriver mother and her boyfriend remain in custody tonight in connection with the death of her 13 month old son and the injuries to his twin brother. Twins were found severely beaten yesterday at the family's home in Ecorse. One boy died at the hospital. The other is still hospitalized after undergoing surgery to repair a broken femur along with other broken bones. Tonight, the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office tells us they are reviewing a warrant request for child abuse charges, but no charges have been filed in the case yet. In Rockwood, the EPA now lifting an evacuation order that after firefighters put out a chemical fire at an industrial building, fire broke out this afternoon at the RJ Marshall Company and it forced families who live nearby to leave their homes. Families are now allowed to return home, but the EPA is advising them to keep their windows and doors closed through the night. One firefighter was treated for heat exhaustion. The cause of the fire still under investigation. Today, the federal government unveiled what Operation Legend will mean for the city of Detroit. The city is getting 44 ATF agents and 12 FBI agents, some with permanent jobs, some temporary. Local law enforcement will get about $1 million in federal grants to address gang and gun violence. U.S. Attorney Matthew Schneider says the federal forces are being brought in to help with the rise of violent crimes. Let me be perfectly clear about what Operation Legend is not. There are no federal troops coming to Detroit or any other area in Michigan to interfere with protesters. 
It's something I've been waiting for for a long time. Back when I was prosecutor, I would say to the ATF, uh, this city is flooded with illegal guns. You're the Department of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. You ought to be taking a lead role in getting these illegal guns out of circulation. Uh, and, and I was very encouraged uh, but what, by what I heard today. Detroit Police Chief James Craig says violent crime is on the rise in the city with some police precincts showing a 90% increase in homicides. Tonight, Congressman John Lewis is lying in state at the Georgia State Capitol Rotunda before being laid to rest tomorrow. Former Presidents George W. Bush, Bill Clinton and Barack Obama are all expected to attend Lewis's funeral service, with NBC News reporting Obama is expected to deliver the eulogy. Lewis died at the age of 80 on July 17th after a short battle with pancreatic cancer. Services will be held at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta tomorrow morning. He will be then buried next to his wife, Lillian. Facial recognition technology is used here in Detroit, but the pandemic is making it more difficult for this software to identify criminals. Yeah, new tonight, what a government study reveals about the controversial technology when it comes to face masks. Let's check in with Ben. Devin and Kim, we are wringing out the last bit of moisture we can. Still some showers on Storm Tracker 4, but a much more comfortable forecast beyond that. We'll check it out in the weekend, too. He's accused of bleaching dollar bills and turning them into $100 bills. The 47-year-old was just released from prison, but he's in hot water again. The defenders followed the investigation to Port Huron, where the feds say the accused counterfeiter lived. Coming up, 